Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, Be Her Rock, Her Mountain. Well, I've got two emails that I'm going to go through with you today. And this, these emails are going to be more centered on relationships and when you actually should be there for your girl and be her source of masculine strength, especially if she's going through a difficult time. Like this first email we're going to get into, one night at like 3 a.m., his girlfriend gets a phone call to find out that her former ex-boyfriend, who she's known for 25 years, had passed away. And the same night, she gets another phone call that her grandmother had passed away. So, and it's, it just re reminds me because a lot of guys don't know how to handle these type of situations. I remember, like my dad, when I was younger, and j when stuff would happen, like especially with my with my mother and her illness, it's like. He didn't know how to deal with emotional things or problems like that. His way of dealing with it was just to not deal with it, just to avoid it and ignore it and just kind of hope that it would resolve itself, which obviously that's not the right way to go about it either. So before we get into it, I got a quote that I wrote I want to share with you. It says, in relationships, men need to be the masculine emotional rock of love and support for their women in order to keep them attracted, in love and as the center of their love lives. The more a man is distant, not a good listener, or unable to be her emotional rock, the more she will seek this essential need outside of their relationship, either through their girlfriends or male friends. Over time, this can lead to affairs and breakups when another guy eventually takes his place because he became complacent and seemingly uninterested in her emotional well-being. If a man does not meet his woman's needs, eventually some other guy will. So let's get into this email. The guy says, hey coach, what should I do if I think my girlfriend wants me to break up with her? This past month, my girlfriend has been going through some tough times. Her grandmother and her ex-boyfriend died on the same night. I was staying with her at her house when the 3 a.m. call came about the ex. She's known him for over 25 years. She's 43 and I'm 49. 30 minutes later, the call came about her grandmother. She was obviously shocked and upset. Yeah, that's like a fucking dump truck full of horse shit backing up into your front lawn, just dumping the whole thing on there and leaving it. It's like, Jesus. He says, that was the last night that I stayed with her. I purposely have been staying low and out of her way because of these situations. And... Wrong, wrong, wrong way to go about it, dude. She needs, you need to be the guy whose shoulder she cries on, who's there for her. And this is what a lot of guys do. They don't know how to handle this situation. They're like, uh, I'm sorry that that happened. Uh, call me later. And then they just kind of run away. It's like I was talking about, my, that's how my dad would deal with things like this, was just to not deal with it because he didn't know how. And when I was younger, I had the same issue. Like I remember when I was married, things were happened when you know to my wife and I was just uh, I'm gonna go hang out with a friend and it just because it felt uncomfortable I didn't know how to handle it and to be there and to listen to her and open open her up and get her to talk about all those things but it's really important that you love her and you support her and help her through her grief it's not that you the relationship then becomes about her grieving you still want to continue focus on hanging out having fun together hooking up making love courting her properly keeping her laughing, but also keeping her talking because she's going to want to talk about these things and she's going to want to cry about it. And you want to be the guy that's there in person listening to this, sitting there saying things like, what else, honey? Tell me more. How'd that make you feel? What else? Don't leave anything out. Until she gets to the point where she's, oh, I feel so much better. I'm so glad we talked. Great. Can't you bring those cute little lips over here and kiss me? But I'm so depressed. I know, but you'll feel better when you kiss me. And you got to keep her laughing. you got to keep her upbeat. Keep her happy by being fun and playful. That's part of like, I wrote it, there's a chapter in my book about being her rock, being her mountain. And in this particular case, in this particular moment, that's what you need to do. You don't you shouldn't be withdrawing from the situation because you don't know how to handle it. Because she needs to, because women are emotional beings and they feel their feelings and they deal with them by talking about them and relating about them. And if you're not there for her, because it sounds like after that night you kind of withdrew and you really haven't spent much time together. So you've allowed this external event to influence your relationship in a negative way. 
she loved you, she cared about you, you're her, her source of masculine strength, and all of a sudden, you're fucking gone like the wind, and you're not anywhere in sight. And so some, she's got to get those emotions and have, go through that grieving period, and you should be the guy there helping her through it instead of running away, kind of crawling like the cow, cock, crawling away like the cockroaches do when you turn on the lights at night and they're all over the floor in your, in your kitchen. And like I said, it's just a, a bad way. It's the total wrong type of behavior to go about it. And if she doesn't feel like you can handle it or you can deal with it or you know how to talk to her and communicate with her and just be a, a good ear to listen. And I'm not talking about doing this on the phone. It's you want to do it obviously in person. Let her talk about it. And then you get right back to playing and having fun and get her mind off things. So she doesn't sit there and wallow in her grief. So he says, she calls me every day or so to tell me about the day. I've been quite close to her and her family and her 15-year-old son. Well, it sounds like you're now you're kind of becoming her therapist on the phone and not really spending any time with her in person. The courtship never ends, period. There's a chapter in my book about that. It never ends. Because women know that if you really love them and you really cared about them, you would continue to hang out, have fun, and hook up. And have a great time with them. But it sounds like you stopped doing that and you're like, you're trying to keep your distance. Now you're talking on the phone like the gay male girlfriend that she talks to instead of being her lover, her soulmate, her rock, her mountain. He says, A month before this, she got a little distant from me and this upset her son. He told her she was fucking up with me and that really bothered her. She became close with me again until the deaths happened. Again, the courtship never ends. It's, this is what happens when a guy is with a woman for an extended period. When he's first with her, he's attentive to her needs. He always wants to listen to her and hear what she has to say. But after several months or several years of being together or being married, because I deal with a lot of people in long-term relationships that are having problems, they get lazy. They get complacent. They get away from the relationship because... The couple that plays together stays together and that's what typically happens is they stop playing together and they stop having fun and then a situation like this comes up and instead of keeping her mind off things and showing her a good time and making love to her and making her laugh, you just like disappear from the picture. All that's going to do is make her feel like you don't give a flying fuck about her. He says she's calling to talk about her life and she's always sweet and kind but we can't ever seem to get together. That's why when she calls, you should be using the phone to set dates, not give out information. You've obviously fallen into that trap of just talking on the phone. Because when she calls, hey, baby, how are you? Oh, I'm really depressed about things. Well, it's like, well, let's get together and talk about our dinner. Let's go out and have some fun. We'll, we'll go to dinner and we can talk. And let's go out. I got a really cool place I'm going to take you to. And she's like, oh, no, I'm not really down with that. I was like, well, let's get together and do that because I don't want to sit here and chit chat on the phone. We haven't seen each other in a few days and I really want to see you. When are you free to get together? A man is decisive, he's direct, and he goes for what he wants. And if she's unwilling to make plans and say, well, I'm really jammed up right now. I'd love to talk to you and get together. We can talk about it over dinner. Maybe we get, you can come over to my place and make dinner together. We can, there's a really cool place I can take you out to. We'll have, have a lot of fun. So when you figure out your schedule, give me a call and plan something. I, I love you. I got to run. And when she calls you a few days later, a few hours later, so hey, would you figure out your schedule? When are you ready to get together? And then make the date. But it sounds like you've kind of given your power away and you've kind of become used to talking to her on the phone instead of hanging out in person. It sounds like you stopped playing together with your girlfriend long before this situation happened with her ex-boyfriend and her grandmother passing away. He says, last Saturday I asked her if she wanted to go out that evening. She said she might have to do something that night and would call me back later. That evening she called while on her way to Costco with an older lady she cleans a house for. I did not bitch or say anything about it except a sincere have fun. She said she was going to call you. That's part of being direct and being decisive. Women aren't going to make the plans. They're not going to ask you out. They don't want any responsibility for that. She said she's going to get back to you and that's up to you to get right to the point. Hey baby, great to hear from you. So would you figure out your schedule? When are you free to get together? And then you plan the date. And if she says, I don't know, that's great. We'll figure it out. I'm real jammed up right now. I'd love to see you. So figure out your schedule and get back to me. And that's what you constantly give her. Because if you don't, then you just end up being the emotional tampon 
over the telephone and her therapist and you never see each other in person. So you've kind of obviously fallen in the rut and this has probably been going on for a while. He says, an hour after we hung up, she was on Facebook and changed her relationship status to in a relationship to j with my name to just in a relationship. I know she's not seeing anyone else as far as you know, again, if you're not there, if you're not courting her properly, hanging out, having fun, and hooking up on a consistent basis, and using the phone to set dates, then another guy comes in the picture who is willing to listen to her, or is like, hey, let me grab a bottle of wine, I'll come on over, and we can, talk, we can chat about this. And then he comes over and sits on the couch, and she's like, oh, my boyfriend, he doesn't seem to get it, he doesn't know how to talk to me, he doesn't seem to want to listen, he's just kind of, when this happened, it seems like he just kind of crawled away, and we were already kind of distant to begin with. He just doesn't seem to care about me like he once used to. And those are the kinds of things that she's going to say to this other dude. He's going to, oh, well, why don't you go ahead and kiss me? Or they get close and then boom, that's how the affair happens. It's a slow process because it's like if you don't date your girlfriend or your wife, some other dude eventually is going to come along and date her for you and take her right off of your hands. Because women know, they know instinctively that if a man really loves her and he really cares about her, he's going to show it through his actions. And here she calls you like she said she was going to do and you didn't plan a date. You let her be the leader and so the conversation just kind of went around in circles and didn't go anywhere. You didn't set a date and nothing happened because you were in essence waiting for her to be the leader. That's not masculine energy. Masculine energy is making the date, making the plans, not letting the woman come up with making the plans. She's so what happened was you basically moved into your feminine and there was no sexual polarity there. You didn't make a date happen and so nothing happened. You hung up the phone and you're frustrated you're not spending any time with her and she's hanging up the phone thinking he doesn't care about me anymore. He said he wanted to see me and then I call him and he doesn't even bring it up. That's what she's thinking. You gotta be direct and decisive and go for what you want. You have to be the leader. Remember, women are physically designed to receive us. They will put themselves into your orbit, but it's up to you to lead it to a physical interaction in person that ultimately successfully concludes in the bedroom with a nice session of lovemaking. And one of the best antidepressants is having sex, making love to somebody you really care about. I'll take her mind off everything, no matter how bad she's feeling. But if you're not hanging out and having fun together, no hookup is going to happen. He says, I know she's not seeing anyone else because we live in a small mountain community and we all know each other. I did not react or say a word about the relationship status thing. And she has not mentioned it and I also have not complained or said anything negative about us being apart. You could say I've been acting almost perfectly, at least in terms of not sounding needy or disappointed about anything. But you're not being a man, you're not being the leader. It's like you're like a woman waiting for your woman to call you and be the man and sweep you off your feet. It's up to you to do that stuff. When she calls you, you should assume she wants to see you. Make a date happen. I say it constantly in video after video after video. I don't say these things just to talk out of my butt. I'm saying these things because there is an actual point and purpose these things. This is what I do. I'm teaching fundamentals here. And obviously this particular guy, he's written me before and I've answered several email questions so I know he watches my videos. And I say the same thing over and over. Obviously in different ways depending upon the story, but at the end of the day, if you knew and understood the fundamentals, you'd be doing that. But obviously you're in a fearful state because you're worried that she's going to dump you and therefore when she calls you, you're sitting there in a fearful place waiting for her to be the man instead of you doing it. And if you keep doing that, I promise you she will eventually break up with you or you'll find out that she's hooking up with some other guy who was man enough to ask her out and make a date and not sit and chit chat on the phone for hours on end and not get anywhere. He says, there's not one complaint or I miss you since this has happened. Nothing from her either about missing me. Two months ago, we bought tickets to go to a concert together with some friends. Today she called in a great mood and asked to honestly tell her if I really wanted to go to the concert. This is her subtle way of trying to figure out whether or not you still care about her because your actions are not reflective of a guy who's been courting his goddess properly. He says, I replied, of course I did. She said that her friend wanted to take her daughter and wanted her, my girlfriend, to ask me for my ticket because she and her friend didn't think I was interested in that type of music. 
This friend of my girlfriend is the same person that introduced us and constantly tells me how glad she is that I'm dating my girlfriend. My girlfriend did not act upset that I still wanted to go. Why would she be upset? She would. She should be glad that you, because you're reaffirming that you still want to take her somewhere. So she's thinking, okay, well he still wants to take me to the concert. Okay, so he must he must still care about me. That's your problem, dude. Is you're not being direct and decisive and making a date happen. It's like you're waiting for her to do it, and when she says, I don't know, I'm gonna check my schedule, and you say get back to me, and then she calls you. It's up to you. It's just like when you walk into a restaurant. You don't look at her and go, gee, it's a 20 minute wait. What do you want to do? Women don't want to deal with that bullshit. You're the man. You're the one with the fucking penis, dude. You're supposed to say, hey, baby, they're on a 20-minute let. Let's, let's go over to the bar and have a glass of wine. Let's go have a coffee or a tea if you don't drink alcohol. You're supposed to be the leader. You're, that means you open the car door. That means you open the door walking into the restaurant. You're a gentleman. You're chivalrous. He says, I asked her to be honest with me and tell me if she wanted me to go. And she said, I don't care. It's like I asked her to be honest with me and tell me if she wanted me to go. If she wanted me to go. He puts in, in big letters. Does that sound like the statement that James Bond would make? The type of guy who of course she wants to go. James Bond would never fucking say such a weak statement, dude. It's like come on, man. Seriously. don't act, You're acting like a total fucking woman like right now. She calls you. Want to know basically do you still want to go to the concert? In essence, do you still love me and care about me? And then you're like, gee, do you want me to go? And what does she get? Instead of getting her man on the other line, she gets a fucking woman on the other line. That's a total fucking turn off. All it's going to do is make her feel like you don't give a shit about her and you don't care about her and you're not being a man. You're acting like a wussy. He says, I'm beginning to believe she wants me to break up with her. It's like the break – you're making the breakup happen because you're coming from a place. Remember, what you fear – you attract what you look at disappears and since you're so fearful that a breakup happens she calls you and you're just it's like you're petrified you don't even do anything you just stand there wait for waiting for someone you know her to be your mommy or something and tell you what to do so you're supposed to know what to do you knew in the beginning when you started dating her that's how you got her to fall in love with you in the first place but obviously this has been going on for a period of time you gotta fucking man up dude jump up and down whatever it takes get your fucking balls dropped it's like, come on, I know you know how to do this stuff. It's like you need to do it. Get to the fucking point. Make a date. Take your girl out. Take your goddess, your queen out and show her a great time. Laugh. Have some fun. Make a move on her when it's appropriate and make love to her. Make sure she's doing 78% of the talking in person, not over the telephone like a phone therapist. He says, because it would be easy for her and her son who likes me a lot and would not be upset at her for breaking up with me. This is quite devastating. In other words, he's thinking that, well, she wants she wants him to break up with her. That way her son won't be pissed at her. This is quite devastating for me as she brought me into everything in her life and family. And I don't want to break up with her. Great. Act like a fucking man instead of a woman. Come on, man. Seriously. Man up, dude. And one of the reasons why I talk this way is masculine energy grows through challenge. So the guy that wrote, I'm challenging you to be a fucking man, to step up, dude. You need to do that right fucking now. Your relationship is going to end if you don't step up. Feminine energy grows through praise. You've got to celebrate women. You take her out and celebrate her. Celebrate your queen. Show her a good time. Get her laughing her ass off. It'll take her mind off everything. Let her talk. And all this shit will come out. But it's like you're not doing that. It's like you're high... It's like you're hiding under the kitchen table like a little girl. He's when I'm thinking that I will go with her to the concert, see how she acts, and when we get back, I will tell her I know she wants me to end it, and I will do so out of respect. Oh, come on, man. I want you to take your right hand right now. I want you to reach out and choke yourself. Like, it's like, think about this, dude. You're not acting like a man at all. You're acting like a woman who's scared that she's going to get dumped by her boyfriend. There's no sexual polarity here. This is a total fucking turn off to her. He says, but it's going to kill me to do this. Because see, it doesn't feel natural. It doesn't feel right because it's not what you want to do. But you're all stuck in your monkey brain and you're not acting like a man. What do you think? Am I imagining this? Yeah, you're imagining this and you're also not acting like a man. So man up, make a date, hang out, have fun, hook up with your girl. If she says no or I can't, say great. Keep the phone conversations to getting right to the point of making a date to get together in person. And if you don't do that, it's going to go nowhere. Don't sit there on the phone for an hour. You're totally screwing up here, dude. 
Get your shit together, bro. I know you can do it. So let's get into the second email. This guy says, hey, Corey, things in my long-distance relationship are still good. I think. I guess we'll see. There was a day last week that she sent me a long email followed by a long and loving text. I didn't get back to her for three days. This is your girlfriend. This is your queen, your goddess. You're so busy, you blow her off for three days. She sends you this nice, loving email, a text, and you don't respond for three days? What the fuck's wrong with you, dude? Come on. Come on, man. Shit. In which she didn't initiate any contact, which is odd. No, it's not, because you made her feel like you don't give a fuck about her. So you don't ever do that. You don't ignore your woman. I don't teach that. I don't know where you got that from. He says, I was really busy, and it just kept getting pushed off. You didn't give a fuck. You didn't care. You were, this is what happens. You are the typical guy who's gotten complacent. Now, I've done this in the past. I didn't blow my girlfriend off for three days. I mean, that's, it's insane. I, I had a long-distance girlfriend who lived in Europe. If she called me, I was like, I got back to her later that afternoon or the very next morning if I got home late or something like that because she was five hours ahead. I didn't blow her off like that. I was like, I wouldn't want her to feel like I didn't care about her. She was calling me two, three times a day. I loved to hear from her. I loved hearing her voice. I love seeing her face on Skype. I love seeing her pictures. I love the things that she'd say to me. It's nice. It's like when a woman's chasing you and she's pursuing you like that, you don't have to do anything except receive her, just like the little girl runs and sits in daddy's lap. When women grow up and they become adults, they in essence want to come and sit in their man's lap. Be her rock. Be her mountain. That's what I mean by that. She's coming to you. It's like, think about it. What do you think would happen if a little girl was like, daddy, daddy, and came and sat in his lap and was like, he just ignored her. It's like, get off my lap. Get off my lap, you little fucking brat. Ah! She'd go crying to him. My daddy doesn't love me. I, you don't ever do that. He says, I know I probably fucked up here, you think? And should have at least let her know I was busy. That would have been eh, wrong response. You don't tell her, oh, I'm busy. I can't. You're not a priority. Come on, man. This is what happens, dude. You get complacent. You take it for granted. You're like, oh, you know, she's long distance. I'm not going to see her. It's just an email. This is how it happens. This is how the distance starts to happen. If you don't date your wife, your girlfriend, if you're not present for her, eventually some other dude's going to come along and take her right off of your hands. Because this is – you're not making her feel love. You're making her feel like you've lost interest and you don't care about her anymore. Be grateful. Be ha Oh, hey, baby. It's great to hear from you. I'd really love to chat, but I can't. I'm real jammed up right now. So let's set a Skype date. When are you free? Great. Tuesday, tomorrow night at 8. Awesome. I'll definitely be free then. I'll call you then. I really look forward to it. Sorry I couldn't talk tonight, but you know, I'll, look for I'll give you my undivided attention tomorrow. We can catch up on everything. I'm really looking forward to it. That's how you handle that. Come on, man. Shit. Anyway, she looked at my text that night but didn't respond to it. The app tells you when someone reads your text. See, now she's giving it back to you. She's like, oh, yeah, fuck you, little motherfucker. You take three days to get back to me? Huh. We'll see about that. Women are much better at playing the game than guys are. They've been doing it since they were little girls and manipulating their fathers. He says, the next day she wasn't online for our scheduled Skype session and later texted me saying that she had been extremely sick for the last two days and that she took a bunch of cough medicine and had slept through her alarm. Well, she could be lying, but you always got to assume the best. Remember, would James Bond assume that a woman's lying about things? Like, oh, okay, no problem. That sounds reasonable. And he reschedules. He's not pissed off. He's not upset. It doesn't change who he is. It doesn't cause him to come unglued. He doesn't, doesn't cause him to stop his work and his mission and purpose and go, oh, she didn't get back to me. What do I do? He says she was also refusing to get on Skype saying that she wanted to go to bed again and was sorry. I was like, no problem, baby. Call when you feel better. We'll talk then. He says my ex-girlfriend used to say that she was sick or sleeping all the time when she was actually with other guys. So I have some insecurities here. Well, that's your shit. It ain't your girlfriend's shit. And at the end of the day, if you, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll continue to get what you've always got. And in this particular case... Because you're blowing your girlfriend off, this is, this is how you start to lose your relationship. So your previous bad habits are now creeping into this new relationship. And remember, what you fear, you attract. You're basically acting the same exact way that ultimately led to your girlfriend deceiving you and going out with other guys. Because if you'd always been her rock and her mountain, 
She won't want to be with anybody else. doesn't matter whether or not she's a cheater or not. At the end of the day, if you are her source of masculine strength and she's head over heels in love, she'll be faithful and loyal to you. But if she's a cheater, as soon as you get lazy and complacent, that's why your ex-girlfriend cheated on you because that's the type of person she was. But it was your bad behavior. You got to take some responsibility for your own actions. He says, I tried my best to not show my insecurity, but I think she caught on and she agreed to get online for a couple of minutes. She did look pretty tired and was in her apartment and she was acting super distant and said that she would call me back in an hour after she woke up. But she texted me eight hours later saying that she fell back asleep and this would mean that she slept almost 20 hours straight. Women are like cats, dude. They come and go as they please and you were being a dick by not fucking calling her back after three days. So she obviously is probably feeling pretty fucking hurt and unloved by you. So she's not going to be in a rush to call you back because she's probably fucking steaming under the surface. Because you made her feel like you don't give a shit anymore. He says, the next day she texts me wanting to get on Skype and she seemed much more normal. But there was a point in the Skype session where she asked if I had slept with any other girls since we have been apart. See, she's assuming you're probably fucking around on her because you're acting different. You took three days to get back to her. Now she thinks she don't care. He says, she said that she was worried because when she met me, I was a, with a lot of girls and she knows it must have been hard for me and she was worried because I was out having fun during Halloween. I told her that love made it easy and that I was going to treat her how I wanted to be treated. She cried and said she loved me. That tells you how much she was hurting. Later that day, she sent me an email saying that she had done some thinking and she knows how hard being faithful is for me and that she would be okay if I had sex with other girls. He says this is very odd for her country. Well, to me, it sounds like that she's worried that you don't care about her and you don't love her anymore and that's why she's saying these things. So she's kind of, in a way, pushing you away. Because if you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to go sleep with somebody else. She'll go, ah, he doesn't love me. So she's fishing around. That's a good sign. It tells me she still loves you and cares about you, even though you were a dickhead to her. He said, we had some back and forth discussing her in intentions and the expectations of our relationship and her apparent lack of self-respect. That sounds like a real positive conversation. Remember, whatever a woman's feeling when you're talking is what she's going to associate with you. In the end, she said she was very happy that I didn't want to introduce bad blood into our relationship and that she would absolutely never cheat on me but was honestly okay if I slept with other girls. She just didn't want to find out. There's a lot of family personal stuff going on in her life right now and she won't be able to fully, fully move to the US for at least a year or two, her idea, not mine. Well, keep in mind, when you're treating her this way, she ain't ever going to move to the U.S. if you're treating her like this. Women already instinctively know current events form future trends. And the fact that she bawled out and started bawling, that tells me she was really fucking hurting, dude. She probably didn't tell you how much or how bad you hurt her, but you did, dude. He says she doesn't want me to wait for her and trust that I will remain in love with her, especially if she allows me to see other girls. I stopped pushing the subject because I was always showing insecurity and didn't want to get into an argument. Men who understand women never argue with them. And it tells me you're trying to use logic and reason to beat her into submission to get her to agree with what you want. She's communicating from a place of relating to you emotionally and she gives you examples so you understand where she's coming from. Because I'm having a hard time seeing how someone can love someone and remain faithful but want them to fuck other people. Like I said, from what you shared, what it sounds like is she's just fishing to see if you really care about her. Remember, she started fucking bawling and crying when you told her that. She was relieved. That's what That was the outpouring of the emotion. That was the outburst of emotion. But if she'd have been like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Then, yeah, I, might, I would be looking at the exact opposite of that. He says, red flags are going off in my head. And why didn't she text me for those three days? And why did she bring up cheating? Because she thinks you're cheating on her, dude. That's what guys do. They disappear. Because you're acting like a dude that's lost interest in her, which you probably did a little bit. You're probably a little bored with her. And that's understandable, but you can't ignore her for three fucking days. And she was just giving back to you. She was reflecting back to you what you were giving to her. 
So if you're upset about that, look at the dude. The dude you see in the mirror, that's who's fucked up. That's who you can blame. He says, why is she now okay with me banging other girls when she wasn't before? I'm trying to separate what are my insecurities, what are hers, and what is actually fucked up, and I'm not really sure what to do. She's still texting me, emailing me almost every day and says she can't wait to see me. Women who don't give a fuck about you don't say I can't wait to see you. She's doing all the pursuing here. If they're chasing you, they're not dumping you. But if you keep blowing her off for three days at a time, guess what? She'll probably fuck around on you. He says she even has a huge calendar on her wall with huge X's waiting for the day that I come to visit her. Duh. Dude, she loves you and you need to fucking tighten your game up and stop being a dick to her and stop blowing her off because you're going to fuck up a completely good relationship even though it's long distance because I've maintained really great long distance relationships in the past and I know how they work and I know how they, they won't work and I'm telling you what you're fucking doing is a strategy for guaranteed fucking failure. You, the courtship never ends, dude. Never means never. It doesn't mean you put her on pause for a couple of weeks. That means every day, 24-7, she's your queen. She's your girl. She reaches out to you. Oh, hey, baby. It's great to hear from you. It's so nice to hear your voice. How have you been? How's your day going? And obviously, if she's not there physically, then you're going to talk on Skype because that's all you can really do until you get together in person. But if she lives in your city and you're like, oh, baby, it's so great to hear from you. I miss you. I want to see you. When are you free to get together? That tells her, oh, he loves me, he cares about me, he wants to be with me in person. That makes her feel loved. That makes her feel validated. It's really simple, dude. Just do, if you treat her right, she will treat you right. So if you'd like to get my help in person, the quickest way is to book a paid phone coaching session. You can do that by going to my website, click the products tab at the top of your screen and follow the instructions for booking a paid phone, Skype or email session with yours truly. And I will talk to you soon.